Hello, I'm ELH, and today I'm covering the basic mechanics of the Avatar Legends tabletop role-playing system by Magpie Games. Specifically, we'll be looking at dice, moves, balance, fatigue, and conditions. Many of these mechanics are the same as they were in the quick start, while others have been expanded and explained further in the full rules. Please note that while I will do my best to explain everything in a concise fashion, there will be things that I miss. To start, we need to define how dice rolls are made and interpreted. It's extremely important to note that the GM never rolls dice. Only the players actually roll anything. To make a roll, you roll two six-sided die, then add the results together along with any relevant modifiers. The total maximum modifier is plus four, while the total minimum modifier is minus three. For example, if you are asked to roll with harmony, then you make the roll and add your harmony score to the result. The final result after applying modifiers is then compared to the following. Anything greater or equal to 7 is considered a hit, while anything less than or equal to 6 is considered a miss. A 7 to 9 is considered a weak hit, or a yes but. A 10 plus is a strong hit, or a yes and. Now it's important to note that a miss isn't strictly a failure. The GM is meant to ramp up the tension and twist what you wanted to do to make things more interesting. Each roll is triggered by a move, which we'll discuss in a moment. Some moves have special rules depending on your rolled result, while others reverse the desired result window so that you want to roll lower instead of higher, so make sure to read each move carefully before rolling. Moves are actions with triggers whose outcomes are uncertain. Unlike skill checks in systems like Dungeons & Dragons, how an action is accomplished is crucial. You cannot simply say, I want to plead with an NPC and then make a roll. Instead, you must provide a reason in the fiction, or roleplay, why, why the NPC should listen to your request. This is an important distinction because which move is triggered can change based on your approach. It's also key to know that there is no specific bending move. Moves can happen with or without bending, again putting focus on the fiction and the how. There are seven basic moves that all characters have access to. Assess the situation sees you rolling with creativity. On a 7 and 9, you can ask one of the following, and on a 10 plus, you can ask two. What here can I use to blank? Who or what is the biggest threat? What should I be on the lookout for? What's my best way out in through? Who or what is in the greatest danger? Acting on these answers grants you a plus one ongoing or a continual plus one to rolls that use the information you've just gained. Note. The GM must answer these questions fully and honestly. New circumstances may change those answers as the fiction progresses, but at the moment of inquiry, you are guaranteed to get a complete and true answer back. Guiding Comfort has you roll with harmony when making an honest attempt towards another person. On a hit, 7+, plus, they choose either to embrace your guidance and comfort to clear a condition or to fatigue, and will answer one question you have honestly, though you don't have to ask one, or they can shut you down and inflict a condition on you as you shift their balance. On a 10 plus, you can also shift their balance if they embrace your guidance and comfort. This move requires honesty and is great for advancing the fiction while potentially dealing with built up conditions and being close to overflowing on balance. The Intimidate move is specifically directed at an NPC, and you roll with passion. On a hit, they choose one of the following, and on a 10 plus, you can eliminate one from the list before they choose. They run to escape or get back up, they back down but keep watch, they give in with a few stipulations, or they attack you off balance and mark a condition. Again, this must target an NPC. PCs must resolve disputes in roleplay or by calling them out, which will be covered in the balance section later in the video. Plead also targets an NPC, though rolls with harmony. On a 7 to 9, the target needs something more, like evidence, guidance, or resources, before they will help, support, or otherwise take action. On a 10 plus, though, they immediately act and do their best until the situation changes. The NPC target must be someone that cares about what you think. Hostile NPCs, ones that don't take you seriously, or NPCs that aren't affected by you, can't be pleaded with. Note, it's important to know that this move is not triggered by calling in a favor or asking for backup if the NPC is already willing to give it to you. The NPC also has to be at risk or otherwise at cost to grant your request when you do plead with them. 
push your luck has you declare what you're trying to do in a risky situation and then rolling with passion. On a hit, you do it, but it costs something. On a 10+, plus, your boldness pays off and you get an additional opportunity presented to you by the GM. This move is generally a catch-all for anything risky that isn't triggering any other move. The cost paid is typically marking fatigue or conditions, but can be nearly anything present in the fiction. Rely on your skills and training utilizes focus for its dice roll. On a hit, whatever you're attempting to do happens. On a 7 to 9 specifically, the GM will tell you how your imperfect execution has led to unexpected consequences. You can either accept those consequences or mark one fatigue. Use this move when doing something risky that involves your training, backgrounds, or other skills. It covers quite a bit, but don't fall into the trap of using it for everything. Trick returns to the targeting of NPCs, this time rolling with creativity. On a hit, they'll believe you and do what you want for the moment. On a 7 to 9, you pick one of the following, and on a 10+, plus, you pick two. They either stumble, granting you a plus one forward, basically a plus one on your next roll that applies, to act against them. They act foolishly and grant you an additional opportunity, or they overcommit and are deceived for some time. The final basic move is help. This does not require any rolling. Instead, you mark one fatigue in order to give someone you're assisting a plus one to their roll. This takes place after the roll has been made and cannot be used during a combat exchange. You must also be able to reasonably assist your ally and describe what it is you're trying to do to help out. Next is balance. Balance is something every PC has. It's a dual track that represents your progress towards two principles. These principles are typically found in your selected playbook and are meant to be opposed to some extent. I'd recommend glancing at my playbook videos if you want an idea of what that entails. As seen to the left, the balance track is best tracked with some form of movable marker. As you move towards the left or right principle, your score with each principle raises and lowers appropriately. Should you ever exceed the track, or go over plus four minus four, then your center shifts towards that end of the track and the track resets. I'll cover more about losing your balance in a moment, but before that, realize that the balance track is both a narrative tool and a pseudo health bar. You ultimately decide how much your current balance affects how you roleplay your character. Now with all that in mind, we can talk about balance moves. Like the seven basic moves mentioned previously, these five moves are available to every character. They are as follows. Live up to your principle allows you to mark one fatigue to roll with a principle instead of the normal stat roll when you take action in accordance with that principle's values. This cannot be used if a move tells you to roll without any modifiers. You must also describe how specifically you're living up to the principle in question. Openly calling some out is a little bit tricky. You start by shifting your balance away from center. This means you move your balance track one step away from whatever your current center is. If you're at your center already, then you get to choose which direction you shift towards. Once you've done this, you name and roll your target's principle. On a hit, the target does what you say or marks a condition. On a 7 to 9, they challenge your view of the world in turn and force you to either mark one fatigue or allow them to shift your balance. On a miss, this all backfires. The target demands you act in accordance with one of your principles, which you must either do or mark a condition. Note, this is not mind control. It does not remove agency from NPCs or PCs. You can deny a call out when an NPC calls upon you to live up to your principle and you wish to reject them. This is similar to the above, but has you rolling instead of the NPCs, since, as a reminder, the GM, and thus NPCs, never roll. This is also one of the reversed rolls, where you want to roll lower rather than higher. You roll with a called out principle. On a hit, you do as the NPC says, or mark a fatigue. On a 10+, plus, you must also shift your balance towards whichever principle was called out. It's only on a miss that you stand strong. Doing so allows you to clear a condition, clear fatigue, or shift your balance. Resisting an NPC shifting your balance is subtly different. Unlike denying a callout where it requires immediate action, this balance move is about an NPC challenging your beliefs and view of the world during your interactions with them. Roll 2d6 flat. On a hit, you maintain your current balance. On a 7 to 9, you choose one of the following. On a 10 plus, you choose two. You can either clear a condition or mark growth by immediately acting to prove the NPC wrong, 
shift your balance towards the opposite principle, or learn what the NPC's principle is if they have one. If you already know what they have, then you gain plus one forward against them. Should you roll a miss, then you mark a condition, and then the GM will shift your balance twice. The final balance move is losing your balance. As mentioned previously, this occurs when your balance shifts past either end of the track. You must immediately choose one of the following outcomes as you obsess over that principle in an unhealthy manner. You may either give in or submit to your opposition, lose control of yourself in a destructive and harmful way, or take an extreme action in line with the principle, then flee. You can only lose your balance on screen, meaning you cannot do so at the end of the session or when your character is not present. Typically, losing your balance means that you are no longer an active participant in the current scene, similar to being taken out. The good news is that you can clear all conditions and fatigue after shifting your center, as was mentioned previously. Fatigue is a straightforward representation of how physically, mentally, and or emotionally tired, stressed, and worn down you are. All player characters have 5 boxes of fatigue, while NPCs can have anywhere between 3 and 15. If all of your fatigue is marked, and something gives you the choice between marking fatigue and something else, you must do the something else. You may also not use any move that requires marking fatigue. Should something outside those two conditions cause you to mark fatigue, you must instead mark a condition. Clearing fatigue usually involves either guiding and comforting, or getting proper rest. Sleeping in the rough clears two fatigue. Sleeping in a covered place like a barn clears three fatigue. Sleeping somewhere comfortable clears four fatigue. If you take a full week off, even in the wilderness, you clear all fatigue. Well, five fatigue. NPCs work a little bit differently. Anyways, you must have access to food and water to benefit from the rest. Side note before moving on to conditions, you can also use rest to reset your balance to center if the circumstances are right. Just check with your game master, they'll let you know. Conditions are emotional states that leave you uncomfortable and vulnerable. There are five that the player characters have to worry about. Afraid, angry, guilty, insecure, and troubled. Each condition inflicts a minus two penalty to certain moves as seen to the left and on page 101. If you have already marked all five conditions and must mark another, you are taken out. You are removed as an active actor for the rest of the scene as you become unconscious, injured, trapped, or otherwise unable to affect the scene. When the scene ends and you recover, you clear all fatigue but keep conditions marked. This means you definitely want to get rid of your conditions. Aside from guiding and comforting, you may also clear conditions by doing something risky or unproductive. Each condition has a specific action that will clear it as seen to the left and again on page 101. Doing so clears the condition at the end of the scene, and you can clear multiple conditions at once in this manner if you wish. Unlike balance and fatigue though, conditions do not clear during a rest. And that is the vital basic mechanics in a nutshell. If you like this quick overview, drop a like and a comment below. You'll also want to subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified when I put out more Avatar Legends content. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to see Avatar Legends in action, check out my Rise of the Dark Avatar game, link below.